Welcome to the rigging tutorial for Martin Audio's Wavefront Precision Series. In this video, we are going to cover how to fly Martin Audio's WPL in a flown configuration. Before you begin to rig a Wavefront Precision Array, please ensure you use display software to calculate the intercabinet angles and array aim. Please always ensure the mechanical safety of the array you intend to deploy is safe. To begin rigging a WPL array, remove the WPL grid T from its flight case. Position the flight case under the rigging point, connecting the rear hook with a shackle to the hole 19. Raise the flying grid out of the case to a working height, allowing you to connect the front motor hook to a shackle on hole 1 to achieve a two-point lift. Wheel a WPL transport car complete with four cabinets under your chosen rigging point. Unlatch the cart top from the supporting poles on all four corners. Lift it off and set it aside. Remove the supporting poles from the transport car and raise the flying frame to the correct height ready to fix to the first cabinet. Lift the flying frame into position on the top cabinet in either the front or rear rigging positions as determined in your display project. Raise the floating front link into the front grid positions and insert the link pin in place. Bring the grid down and insert the lock pin attached to the front rigging positions on each side of the cabinet. Lower the rear point and attach the rear link from the top cabinet to the flying frame's link position in the grid just in front of hole 9. To fly an array from the rear position is no different. Find and locate the rigging position halfway down the grid and connect to the front two rigging points of the first cabinet. Then attach the rear link hole to the rear link spine found just in front of hole 18. WPL allows you to set the inter-cabinet angles whilst the cabinets are in the carts on the floor, allowing for an efficient deployment of an array. The inter-cabinet angles should now be checked if not already pre-selected. Set them now according to predictions from your display project file. Lock pins are to be left in their stow hole position found to the right of the rear rigging spine. Please ensure all angle pins are removed from the rear rigging points. This will allow the bars to drop, allowing the user to select the appropriate angles required throughout the four cabinets. All WP arrays require the first cabinet angle to be set at 0.5 degrees when connected to the grid. Simply move the link spine on each cabinet to its angle and pin in position. Please check link pins are inserted, ensuring the cabinets do not separate when lifted in the air. You can now lift the array until the cart is just clear of the ground. As the array goes up, the cabinets will open to the inter-cabinet angles you have pre-selected from the displayed project prediction. Please insert the rigging pins at the lock position found to the right of the rear rigging spine on each cabinet, locking the inter-cabinet angles in place. At this stage, the cable loom should be connected to the grid and the first four cabinets connected based on your box resolution. Support the rear of the cart and remove the rear pin holding the cart to the array. Then lower the back of the cart to the ground. Repeat at the front of the array, supporting the cart and removing the front pins holding the cart to the array at the same time to ensure the cart base or cabinet is not damaged. Lift the array to a height where a second cart complete with a further four cabinets can be placed underneath the array. Pre-select inter-cabinet angles on cabinets 5 to 8 as before, ensuring the link pins throughout all four cabinets are connected. Lock pins should be left in their stow hole position to the right of the rear rigging spine. Always remember to check the inter-cabinet angles to ensure they are set according to your display software prediction. Remove the front rigging link pins from cabinet 4. Then remove the lock pins from cabinet 5. Lower the upper part of the array down to cabinets 5 to 8 so that the front grills meet. Raise the floating link from cabinet 5 up to cabinet 4 and insert the link pin on both sides. 
Next, lower the array and insert the lock pins on cabinet 5. You can now lift the array until the cart is just clear of the ground. As the array goes up, the cabinets will open to the inter-cabinet angles you have pre-selected from the displayed project prediction. Please insert the rigging pins at the lock position found to the right of the rear rigging spine on each cabinet, locking the inter-cabinet angles in place. With cabinets 5 to 8 now rigid, we can swing the array back on the front rigging points so that the trapezoidal sides between cabinets 4 and 5 are touching. This will allow you to connect the upper half of the array to the bottom 4 cabinets. Drive the array into the ground to allow the rear rigging spine on cabinet 4 to meet with the rear rigging link on cabinet 5. Insert the link pin into position, raise the array to angle, and then use the lock pin to make the array rigid. To remove the cart base, support the rear of the cart and remove the rear pin in the link position holding the cart to the array and then lower the back of the cart to the ground. Repeat this at the front of the array supporting the cart and removing the front pins holding the cart to the array at the same time to ensure the cart base or cabinet is not damaged. We can now connect all cabling required for cabinets 5 to 8 based on the box resolution in your display project optimization. To add additional cabinets, please repeat the process. When all cabinets and cables are connected, we can now raise the array to trim and aim. Landing the array is simply a reversal of the rigging procedure before, lowering the array until it is just above the cart. Please ensure all cables are disconnected before continuing. Raise the front of the cart and the pin it in position to the front points of the array. Raise the rear of the cart to the rear rigging spine, placing the rigging pin in the link position at the back of the cabinet. Remove the lock pin from cabinet 4 and lower the array until the cart is on the ground taking the weight of the array, allowing the cabinets to collapse down until the trapezoidal side is touching. Carefully unpin the fifth cabinet from the fourth cabinet at the rear by removing the link pin on the rigging spine. With all lock pins removed throughout cabinets 5 to 8, as the array comes down, the cabinets will collapse back down ready for transportation. To completely disconnect cabinets 5 to 8, lift the array and allow it to swing on the front links, then lower the array down so that the cart meets the floor. Please be aware that the array may swing when this is done. With the lower four cabinets now fully grounded, we can remove the front rigging pins from cabinet 5 on both sides, then remove rigging pins from cabinet 4. This will allow the floating front link to drop, where we can now place pins back in their stowed positions, ready for transportation. Once the cabinets are in the cart, connect the four supporting poles and the cart lid, and place them ready for transportation. De-rig the last four cabinets, please follow the same procedure. Removing the grid requires you to remove the link pin from the rear rigging spine between cabinet 1 and the grid. You can then put it back into its stowed position ready for transport. Raise the rear point until the grid is clear of the rigging spine. Remove the front floating point lock pins on the first cabinet. Then remove the front floating point link pins from inside the front of the grid. This will allow the floating points to drop back into the position ensuring all rigging pins are in their stowed positions ready for transportation. To pack away the WPL grid tee, please lower the front rigging hook to a working height so that we can unclip it from the shackle, ensuring the rear point is holding the weight of the grid. We can now lower the rear point down using the motor to safely place our toying grid back into the flight case. With the grid landing in the case, we can now disconnect the hook from the rear point. Once the grid is inside its case, we can now connect the flight case sides and lid ready for transportation. 